Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here. I'm Laura Weiss. I'm the director of the CHIPS Research and Development Program Office in the Department of Commerce and NIST. Um, I get the $11 billion that Undersecretary Lori Lacasio talked about, and I can't have a better job. Research and development, that's what it's all about. Every day we're reading about chips in the newspaper. I read the other day about chips in Parmesan cheese. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, okay, but, but really, research is fueling optimism in our society and world, and that is why the research and development component of the Chips and Science Act is so critical. I want to thank everyone for having me here again today. Um, let's see here. We can get, there we go. OK. So while a lot of semiconductor innovation and design really happens in the US, we do need a global, holistic, ro robust, and inclusive R&D ecosystem here to support the growth that we're just talking about in chips and manufacturing that Chips for America is, is bringing. We need prototyping and testing capabilities for entrepreneurs, large, and, large companies, small companies, industry, academia, everyone for them to be able to go into these prototyping facilities. We need researchers and developers with, that can have more access to these facilities and equipment and design tools and data sets that we can make accessible to all of those doing the research and development. We know the price of these large facilities are very expensive, so we need some affordable options for all of those doing our research and development. In response to this need, the Chips for America Act specify the creation of four programs, and I'll be talking about these today. And these are the four that are focused on research and development. They're, they will share infrastructure and participants and projects. They're going to operate in coordination with each other and with the Chips for America manufacturing incentives that you heard earlier and with the microelectronics R&D programs supported by other federal agencies. Each of these entities will include a focus on and funds for workforce development. First, the National Semiconductor Technology Center, or NSTC. This is the anchor of the CHIPS R&D programs. The NSTC will create an engine of innovation that expands access to capabilities and tools and enables industry, academia, and government to build on each other's work. Next, the National Advanced Packaging Manufacturing Program, or NAPMP. This will help the U.S. establish advanced packaging capabilities to regain and keep leadership in semiconductors. Third, up to three new Manufacturing USA institutes will advance research and commercialization of semiconductor manufacturing technologies. And fourth, the CHIPS Metrology Program at NIST will conduct the foundational measurement science critical to the development of new materials, designs, and packaging. The investments we make in research and development really will make our domestic manufacturers, many of you in this audience, more innovative and competitive, and will drive innovation across the US economy, strengthening every sector that relies on semiconductors, which is basically every sector. The goals for the CHIPS R&D programs are to first establish the capacity to invent, develop, prototype and deploy the foundational semiconductor technologies of the future here in America. This is absolutely critical. Second, we will accelerate ideas to market. We want the best ideas to achieve commercial scale as quickly and cost effectively as possible. And third, we will contribute to a robust semiconductor workforce. We want enough inventors, designers, researchers, developers, engineers, technicians, and staff to meet the needs of the government and commercial sectors. So we have made a lot of progress in just one year. The Industrial Advisory Committee, or the IAC, a stellar group of dedicated volunteers from across the sector, they have met three times, formed four working groups, and made dozens of thoughtful and comp comprehensive rep rep recommendations to CHIPS. We announced a slate of new CHIPS R&D leaders at the June meeting of the Industrial Advisory Committee. I am one of those leaders, along with Jay Lewis and Richard Dwayne Chambers. If you're here, raise your hands. I can't see because it's very dark from up here, but I know they're here today. And we have Marla Dowell, who's been directing the metrology program for several months. She's also here in the audience, too. Probably can't see hands waving. 
Um, Eric Lin, who will, st will stay on as ch in CHIPS R&D as my deputy director, and we're excited to have him remain as well. And we have additional announcements in the coming months. We've also released several publications that contribute to standing up the CHIPS R&D, including a vision and strategy for NSTC. A few weeks ago, the Departments of Commerce, Defense, and Energy, and the National Science Foundation released a statement formally establishing the NSTC as a public-private consortium. This conceptual diagram, which we included in the NSTC vision and strategy paper, shows the stages of innovation for a new chip design across government programs. NIST has been a consistent partner on DARPA programs. For example, the NIST Communication Technology Lab delivers measurement and validation support for several ERI programs, from the MCubic to the former DAHI program and their work on heterogeneous integration to the DARPA CHIPS program exploration of chiplet standards. New NIST funding under the CHIPS Act and new DARPA work on ERI 2.0 will deepen these ties. CHIPS staff members are already talk talking with DARPA and the Department of Defense about new pathways for DARPA-funded researchers to access facilities and resources. About onshoring advanced packaging through ERIs, NGMM, and NIST's packaging program and about meeting our common goal of creating a vibrant domestic manufacturing and innovative ecosystem. I've covered some of our milestones and we have many more to come in establishing these ambitious transformational programs. I will now share some more details and the latest updates of the actual four programs. As I mentioned in the um, the NSTC, the National Semiconductor Tra Technology Center, will be the anchor for the new CHIPS R&D organizations. It seeks to reduce the time and cost of moving from idea to commercialization by making semiconductor prototyping and design capabilities accessible to a wide audience. The NSTC will focus on three key program areas. First, technology leadership. The NSTC will, provide, will promote leadership by providing a collaborative space where the community can work together on common technical challenges, by funding research, and by providing access to facilities and expertise. Second, managing assets that benefit the community. We anticipate that the NSTC will manage a variety of physical and digital ass assets that will benefit the broad community through better availability, lower cost, strong support for experimentation, and improved technical support. And third, workforce programs. The CHIPS program office estimates that operating the semiconductor fabrication facilities eligible for awards under the first funding opportunity that Under Secretary Lacosia mentioned, those will require more than 90,000 workers to operate them. Building a semiconductor ecosystem in the U.S. will also require training and inspiring a new generation of engineers and scientists to fuel the next phase of American innovation and manufacturing. The NSTC will help newly train, retrain, and upskill the people needed to staff the industry. Currently, a selection committee is working to identify members of the Board of Trustees for the NSTC. The department anticipates the board will then hire a CEO and create a new nonprofit entity to operate the NSTC. Okay, as Lori emphasized, we want you to join the NSTC. The department expects a flexible membership structure with different fees by scale of institution and by industry sector. The objective is to make membership attractive and accessible to all parts of the community, including the academic and research community, businesses of all types, and other stakeholders. Member benefits may include access to research and development programs, technical expertise, emerging materials and process technologies, and manufacturing test vehicles. Access to digital assets, such as EDA and design enablement tools and intellectual property. 
facilitated access to multi-project wafers and leading edge and mature foundries. Access to additional resources for startups. Participation in NSTC advisory groups, including groups focused on roadmaps, standards, and grand challenges. And participation in training, workforce development, technical exchange programs, and access to a workforce data clearinghouse. As you know, so now we're moving on to the NAPMP. That was NSTC. The next program is the NAPMP, the National Advanced Packaging Manufacturing Program. And as you know, establishing advanced packaging capabilities in the U.S. is a critical need. CHIPS R&D will stand up an advanced packaging program that will work closely with the NSTC. In the early fall, we will provide a, a paper describing in detail our vision and strategy for the NAPMP. We have conducted extensive industry outreach to inform our work. A January 2022 RFI, for example, received more than 250 responses regarding packaging and other aspects of CHIPS. The department also hosted 26 workshops and listening sessions with members of the semiconductor industry and ecosystem. Our analysis of that RFI and recommendations from the Industrial Advisory Committee indicate the need for technology innovation that is so state-of-the-art that domestic manufacturers are not motivated to go offshore for packaging. That's one reason why the NAPMP and the powerhouse research environment of the NSTC need to be so closely tied. Respondents felt that the NAPMP must excel in heterogeneous integration, chiplets, photonics, and co-design of, of semiconductors and packaging solutions. And they want access to low volume, cost-effective prototyping capabilities and they suggested that the NAPMP consider providing capabilities for material characterization, metrology, modeling simulation, and help to develop standards. On to the Manufacturing USA Institutes. The CHIPS R&D will establish up to three new Manufacturing USA Institutes dedicated to semiconductors. We recently published a summary of responses to an RFI seeking input from the community. We anticipate announcing the topics for up to these three new CHIPS-related Manufacturing USA Institutes this fall. You can learn about that as soon as it happens by signing up for our email at chips.gov. And the fourth program is metrology. Metrology plays a key role in up to 50% of semiconductor manufacturing steps and throughout the stages of technology development. NIST has been conducting research on semiconductors since the late 1940s. We've helped industry with ways to measure chips and components and to detect chip defects. We also characterize new materials, chemicals, and processes for use in manufacturing. The CHIPS Act enables the NIST metrology program to greatly expand, forming communities of practice to support close collaboration with external partners. The program's priorities are informed by extensive stakeholder outreach. Workshops held in April 2022, for example, drew more than 800 participants. In September of 2022, we identified seven grand challenges that need critical attention from a metrology perspective. We've organized our metrology program around these challenges. They are aligned with a semiconductor ecosystem so that we can address industry challenges in an agile fashion. Because the ecosystem is complex and addresses everything from materials to devices to performance, each of these communities is an interdisciplinary team that, that combined has hundreds of years of metrology experience. You will hear more from us as we execute these ambitious programs, and we want to hear from you. Watch out for an upcoming CHIPS R&D Standard Summit and for additional convenings as we grow. Again, for information, please visit chips.gov. Thank you again for having me here today. It's been a real pleasure.